Well, we're joined now uh, by one of the city's big names. He is a chair of the UK's biggest supermarket, Tesco, and the country's biggest house builder, Barrett Developments, John Allen. So really no one better to uh, speak to. Uh, delighted to have you on the programme. <coughs> delighted to be here, Sophie. Uh, now, you're the chair of Tesco, had pretty good Christmas by all accounts. Um, but how hard are things for customers at the minute? Well, I think it depends on the customer. You know, there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer. Uh, I think customers are very savvy. They're working very hard to find ways of uh, alleviating the impact of rising food prices so that they can trade down, they can use different ingredients, they can cook more at home as opposed to going out. Um, but underneath that, of course, there are a large number of people who really are struggling to make ends meet. And we're very conscious of our responsibilities, not just to those who shop with us, but also those who can't afford to shop with us, which is why we support a lot of food banks, charities associated with that, etc. Are you seeing a change then in people's shopping habits? I was interested uh, mm. when you were talking about people shopping more savvily, mm. uh, you know, value items being bought mm. more of, or what's going on? Yeah, I think there's a whole series of mini trends, uh, but they include people, you know, cooking more at home as opposed to going out, uh, trading down from brands to own label. Uh, we've been advertising, showing people meals, simple meals they can construct for a, with named ingredients and prices, which are uh, on a per capita basis very low. Uh, we've been running ads telling people to check what you've already got uh, before you go out and shop, because you may be buying things you don't need, and that contributes to food waste, which, you know, is massive still in homes. Yeah. But of course, there are people who haven't got fridges stuffed full of food, you know, and and they need they need help. Mm, it's, it's really interesting uh, to hear uh, you uh, say that. And uh, what is happening with food inflation as well? Because it's interesting with inflation. You, you have the headline rate, but then obviously you mm -hmm. have what's going on under under the bonnet, mm, if you like, mm. with food inflation, but also particularly you know some of those staples as well. Yeah, I think look, it, 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 we're not in the business of making forecasts about food inflation. I did about a a year ago, a bit over a year ago, and, and more by good luck than good judgment, mm. got, happened to get it right, and I made a vow then that I would... Uh, well, after you got it right, again. we want to hear more of it then. That, uh, no, 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 but, I, uh, but that was a fluke, frankly. Um, I, I, my chief executive, when he announced our results last week, said that it, our hope was that um, the peak of food inflation would probably arrive around about the middle of this year, mm. but frankly, that's an aspiration as much as a forecast. Mm. And, um, and that doesn't mean prices will start falling. It means they hopefully will start, stop going up nearly as fast. So, we so we're a way off the peak? It, th I, think we've got, I think we've got some way to go to get to the peak and then prices will still probably continue to rise more modestly, but who knows, mm. you know? And it's, it's a function of all sorts of things that are beyond our control, energy prices, what happens in the Ukraine, Ukraine harvests mm. and so on. Mm. Um, so we will see, but you know, we, and I'm sure other, uh, supermarkets will continue strenuously to help our customers cope, you know, with the fact that prices are still going up. For example, we've locked a thousand prices until Easter, so that's a thousand prices that people know are going to be the same at least until Easter. Is uh, Rishi Sunak says he wants to uh, halve inflation this year. Do you think that's achievable? I'm I'm not qualified to make that, uh, that judgment. I mean, it'd be wonderful if it happened. I think inflation will go down, but remember, halving inflation still means prices rising at maybe 5 or 6%, which I think would seem terrific in comparison with now, but prices would still be going up. And actually, I mean, if you're on the breadline, that's still getting harder for you. In, in, indeed. So I think, the, uh, I, I think inflation will start to come down, uh, but just how much and when... I think I'm not brave enough to forecast. That makes sense. Um, just the, the final sort of forecast question, if you like, and mm. it's just a soft one, don't worry. Um, the economic growth figures for November, which were released this week, were actually surprising, like better than some people expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that we should have a slither of optimism, I guess, that the, the landing may be softer than we think? Well, I think a sliver. Mm. Uh, but, you know, individual months' figures can be... First of all, they get adjusted subsequently. They don't always end up the same as they start. The World Cup may have helped. People were, you know, buying large <laughs> amounts of... Well, or staying in and buying large amounts of beer or whatever yeah, to, yeah. to celebrate. So I wouldn't read too much into uh, these figures, but one's hope would be that if we do have a recession, that it's a relatively mild one and not too prolonged. But, you know, that's a hope rather than a forecast.
We um, have talked a lot about inflation um, and what mm -hmm. it means for people's budgeting. Uh, obviously, the big worry is that people's pay isn't keeping up uh, mm -hmm. with inflation. Well, what's Tesco's policy been when it comes to pay? Well, I think we had our normal pay settlement in the you know, first, second quarter of 2022. We then realised that with racing, rising inflation, that wasn't adequate. So we had a second round of negotiations with our unions and our colleagues. And we ended up, I think, with a overall rise for our colleagues on the shop floor. Um, of around 8% last year. And we've told them that we will start this year's negotiations earlier, in fact, in the next couple of weeks, so that if it is necessary to make a further adjustment, and I don't want to anticipate that, uh, we'll be in a position to do so. So I think we think it's important to keep up with events. And, you know, you mentioned my re relationship with Barrett's. Barrett's have done something similar. Mm -hmm. You know, we've added extra one-off payments to our people to because... You know, if you are at the lower end, paid end of the spectrum, this is a cost of living crisis is a really tough thing for people to get through. It's much easier for highly, higher paid people, which is why both the businesses I've been involved with, um, the uh, price, the salary rises for management have been low single digits because the view is they can afford to, they've got enough in the pot to be able to cope with a rise that is below inflation for a time. I mean, I have to say, the contrast between uh, Tesco and Barrett uh, revising uh, mm -hmm. pay settlements mm -hmm. and what's happening with the government, uh, mm -hmm. sticking with the pay review bodies, settlements, mm -hmm. it's quite stark. Well, yes, I think. I don't know if you're asking me to express an opinion on that, Sophie, but... Uh, I was giving the opportunity to, if you, you wish to. Well, look, let me, let me start by saying, I think, I mean, Tesco is relentlessly politically neutral. We, mm -hmm. we want to work with whatever the government of the day is, um, but you can have personal views. So if I express okay. a personal view rather than a Tesco view, I think, you know, I think it would be good, and perhaps there are the first signs of this happening, for government to start engaging with <clears throat> the, those groups of public service workers who are currently unhappy, uh, because I think the only way to settle this will be through negotiation. Mm -hmm. Understood. There's also anecdotal evidence um, of people leaving jobs in the public sector, mm -hmm. like care work or nursing, and coming mm. to work in supermarkets, where they mm -hmm. may feel that their pay uh, is competitive and that their working conditions are frankly better. Mm. Are mm. you seeing that? I think a little bit. I haven't got any numbers, no. but I know that, you know, certainly people are leaving the care system, I think, um, and heading towards other uh, jobs, including supermarkets, including Tesco. I'm not sure about nurses. Mm. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I think it's a, it is a competitive labour market mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's something I think those involved in these discussions need to remain aware of. Um, I'm keen to talk to you uh, with your uh, Barrett uh, hat mm -hmm. on uh, as well because there's been lots of uh, concern about the state of the housing market. Mm -hmm. um, what's your assessment of, of where we are? Well, <clears throat> there is definitely a downturn in demand at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think the rise in interest rates in the early autumn spiked rises in mortgages and that's actually put people off buying houses understandably this happens from time to time in the the house building market the house builders i think are perfectly capable of weathering this storm we all tend to run with strong balance sheets knowing that every decade or so there will be a year or two that are where there's a downturn i think we'd like to see more government support particularly for new uh, you know new home buyers first time home buyers um, and we would like to see some reform of the planning system to make it easier to build, because the other thing that's inhibiting the house building sector at the moment is a planning system, which means you can't actually And we build. saw Conservative MPs blocking plan reforms as well. Well, precisely. Um, but, you know, but I, I think the, you know, the house builders are fit and strong and will survive. Um, I'm concerned more about people who, a lot of people this year, will face, as the end of fixed-term mortgages, come, they will face much higher mortgage payments, which will add another twist to the cost of living crisis for, for many families. Do you, you think know, we're, so really brave, we're, we're, we're really aware of, of just how difficult that crunch is likely to be? Um, I don't know. I think it depends who you're talking to. Yeah. I'm certainly aware of it, and I think it's, uh, it's, going to, it's going to make life difficult for many hundreds of thousands of families mm -hmm. uh, each year as, you know, deals uh, are... Uh, uh, come to an end and are revised and go up significantly. Now, the fact that interest rates have abated a bit is helpful. Yes. Uh, so it's not as bad as it looked in, you know, the early autumn. And do you think we'd like to see a fall in house prices this year, then? Yes. Yeah. Care to make a forecast? No, you don't like to make them, but... Uh, absolutely not, but I think it would be very un... 
you know, it, it, it's very unlikely there will not be some... So indeed, there is some softening already. Uh, and I think if people go looking for our houses or any of our competitors, they're all behaving very similarly. They'll find the sort of little incentives to try to persuade them, which weren't there mm -hmm. a year or two ago. And I think that's just understandable behaviour. OK. Um, it's been really interesting to talk. Thank you so much for coming in uh, this Sunday morning. Thank you. Thank you.